An injured buzzard is the latest in a long list of birds and animals nursed back to health by the Sigari family, who live right on the banks of the Tawi. This feeling for wild creatures is part of a life lived close to the estuary's changing patterns of tide and season. And for Dave Sigari and his wife Dolly, it's the tide that rules their lives. When you're fishing for a living, the ebb and flow between the wide banks decides when you can start and when you must stop the daily harvest of the estuary. But when I came to this area about 30 years ago, there had been quite a lot of families making part of their living on their living by state netting and shrimping. But it had all died out bar the two old chaps. But I couldn't learn much off them. Didn't want to tell me anything. Yeah, okay. But gradually I picked it up myself. Um, I saw the way the nets were laid, mine. And as time went on, I, I began to make nets and from repairing them. These marshes and these mud flats support a lot of life. Lots of widgeon, duck, snipe. Of course, everybody's after them. Not going to say they're going to get them. Very interesting place to live, and I wouldn't live in no other place at all. And this, this part of the estuary is the right place for a fisherman. Nobody would tell you anything. You had to learn everything yourself. Of course, it was hard at some times until I got a bit of luck. And then I managed to get a shore wade net license. And uh, then the fishery board then gave me the shore license then for salmon. And uh, we managed comfortable on that ever since then. Fishing one thing and trying the other when that failed and so on. And been hard times sometimes and sometimes good times. It's coming clean the river now. The sand is coming where the mud used to be. I think it's coming better altogether now. Of course those birds over there, they, they all feed off this estuary, off the estuary worm mostly, and cloud shrimp. That's what the happy zone is. These state nets are about, we are allowed up to 300 yards long, but that's too long for any of the mud banks in this area. The fishing is later in the year now, all the flappers are coming up later. You know, on the bigger tides and real good stuff. And getting the stakes, stakes are very difficult. The, um, mostly hazels, we use a few ash because everybody's using them for bean sticks. We've got to hunt a long way for them, and you need at least 80 for one net. Oh, look These are stretched out in line with the tide running out. You mark them off, S same distance apart, every one. Then you curl them round at the end in a diminishing circle and set the net on these to trap. So that as the fish hunts up and down, as he's going back on the tide after feeding on the mud banks, he can't find his way out 
And by the time he's... Some do get out, but as, as the tide is finished, they're left laying in there, but mostly in the traps at either end. Very good, Fatty, there. We have to be very keen about the time. Directly the water's leaving the net, and we've got to be there. Otherwise, the birds, the, not so much the seabirds as the crows, will attack the fish and they'll ruin them. They'll peck the eyes out and everything. It's impossible to sell them then. We leave the net there roughly about say, seven days. Never no more because the fish get to know it's there and they won't come into it. you've got to know what you're doing when you're out on the mud banks and sand banks in the estuary because you can be busy doing what you're doing raking cockles or putting stake nets down or something and if the boat is not near and the tide can creep round you and quietly in no time you turn round and it's all water behind you and you're for it then you've got to wade or swim for it very dangerous for those people who come down there and know nothing about us the warm weather comes and the water gets warmer we get the shrimp nets out and we're off but it takes about a week to find them aye but too small see Dolly throw them in oh, a load of crabs. throw them in to grow yeah. again see. there must be some good grub here that yeah. mount of them and these crabs yeah. but they're no good to me no Look at them. The but the shrimps are they coming. These shrimps are good size, yeah, too. Yeah, they're a nice size, aren't they? Yeah. Got to hunt around now to see where they're laying this year, because they don't lay where they laid last year. Well, somebody totally different, because the river's always changing, the bottom's changing. But once we find them, we get into them. And, of course, the visitors enjoy buying the shrimps off us, because brown shrimps they are, see? If we want the air... The estuary in, prawns, or the big prawns, we've got to go further down the coast. Of course, it's not an easy net to, to use. You've got to push very hard, and to get the big ones, you've got to get a bit out from the shore, because only in close, the cloud shrimp, little tiny things, they go through the mesh. But the ones we want now, the good ones, they're out a bit. And once you get into them, you've got to keep pushing with the net then and stir the sand up so they all come into the net and you get once you've got a good few push them into the shore and unload them and then carry on keep at them of course the estuary is a wonderful place to live there's something here for everybody providing they know what they're looking for